You may be seated. Well, good morning, everyone. <laughs> wow. <laughs> Are you waiting for somebody else to start the service? Let's try that again. Good morning, every, everyone. Good morning. Oh, that's so much nicer. It's good to see you. It's good to be together. Uh, I'm not going to talk about the weather. Oh, what is going on? Hasn't, has anyone told Winter that it's overstayed its welcome and needs to move on? I mean, is it o it's on us then to communicate? We're ready for you to be gone? Oh, man. Well, this, this last Sunday, we experienced probably the highest high in the Christian calendar of the whole year in celebrating Easter. The highest high the biggest day in the in the Christian calendar. It was a good day for Jesus. You guys, he rose from the dead, right? Do you, we're talking about Easter. Do you guys know you're in church? It, are we just out of sorts? Okay, I'll try to be better. I, I won't pick on you so much. Well, with this Easter, we're coming off the heels of Easter. We know that something really big has happened. Something really big occurred. Jesus rose from the dead. But then it can be a little difficult. It can take some time, I think, to process all that we now have because Jesus is in our life. All the benefits. How our lives can be different because Jesus has risen from the dead and we are in relationship with him. So it, it's kind of like drinking from a fire hydrant. It's just too much information. And it can take a while. So... We're going to slow that down. We're going to spend a little extra time uh, in a season called Eastertide. So we are now in a new season. It's called Eastertide. And I'll talk more about that. But it's just this opportunity for the next four or five weeks for us to talk about what does it mean to have Jesus in my life? What are the benefits? Wh how does life look different? Because Jesus is a part of my life. So that's what we're going to be tackling and beginning in our new sermon series. So stay tuned. Thank you, Tanya. My boil fell off my microphone. It's just a muff. It's, oh, I hate the fuzzy. Glue the fuzzy on. Thank you, Tanya. Okay, we, ha we only have one announcement. One simple little announcement. Uh, we are announcing our... <laughs> are you guys ready for church today? <laughs> oh, my gosh. If you're going to be like this, I'm going to send you to the furthest pew because then I don't have to listen to it, no. So we have an announcement for us in Burgess. We are going to be hosting a charge conference in the middle of our ad council meeting next month. And DS Cannon has to give us special permission to do that, but that's where we're going to be uh, uh, approving our leadership slate that the leadership nominating and leadership development committee offers that list of leaders, and then the church, the charge conference, which is hosted by the ad council, they have a uh, voice and vote. Anyone can come to that meeting, but it's only members and the ad councils have the main responsibility to vote on that. One month from now, and that letter is at either exit. So if you're interested in reading that and learning about that, feel free, right? Knock yourselves out. All right, that's it. Let us, I think we need, I think we need extra prayer this morning. And I have to warn you that I, I wrote and read and crafted parts of this prayer when snow was not on the ground. <laughs> so let's enjoy the irony of that. I couldn't change it quick enough, so we're just going to go through it. So let us pray. Good and gracious God, our most glorious creator, as we greet the signs in nature around us of spring, once again regaling us in bloom, <laughs> in the songs of returning birds and the fields and the gardens soon to be planted. That takes faith. We give you praise for an even greater sign of new life, the resurrection of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, that we especially celebrate at this time. The sadness and despair of his death has given way to the bright promise of immortality. For the resurrection is our guarantee that justice will triumph over treason. Light will come 
and overcome darkness and love will conquer death. We praise you in this Easter season. Change our lives, change our hearts to be messengers of Easter, Easter's joy and hope. We make, our, we make this our prayer through Jesus Christ, our risen Lord forever. And as we enter into the silence, meet us here, Lord. Meet us in this new season. Open our minds in, in understanding more fully all that you have given us through Easter. Amen. Good morning. Please stand for the call to worship. Protect us, O God, for in you we take refuge. Let us say to God, you are our God. We have no good apart from you. Today we come to worship God in truth and turn away from worshiping the idols all around us. God delights in our sincere worship, but sorrow visits those who give their worship to we bless the Lord who gives counsel, who instructs our hearts in the secret of the night. We keep the Lord always before us, so that we shall not be moved from God's way. Our hearts are glad, our souls rejoice, and our bodies rest secure. Because God keeps us from destruction in this life and the next. God shows us the path of life. And in God's presence is the fullness of joy forever. And so we say to God, You are our Lord. We have no good apart from you. Amen. Please remain standing for our next hymn.
Allow me to open up a little word of prayer before we go to our joys and concerns. Lord, as we come into this new season, this Eastertide, this season of spring that we're longing to experience, uh, Lord, we ask that you would be with us as we enter into a new sermon series, that you would open our minds, deepen our relationships with you, strengthen and mature our faith in you as we explore what it means to follow you, how, what are the benefits of knowing you post-Easter. Guide us in that process, Lord God. And now as we come before you to lift up joys and concerns, we are, we are grateful, we are joyful that you listen. Through Christ, you listen to our prayers and you answer them each and every time. But sometimes it might be different than what we expect. So give us eyes of faith to see the answers that you bring. And all of God's children said, amen. Joys and concerns, things that we can be in prayer for for one another. Yes. Um, many of you know Dad was in the hospital with uh, TDF. We got him out Friday night. I brought him back home. We were in the emergency room again last night. And it's uh, neurovirus this time. But he's back out. And he is at home. But he's in isolation because it's safer to keep him there away. He has pretty much no immune system right now. And he's on a modified diet and he's very weak. He can get up and walk, but maybe three steps. While I was in the emergency room last time with Dad, my sister Donna was in the emergency room with her husband and Brainerd, and he was admitted to the hospital with some sort of kidney issue, don't know yet. So today, my sister Mary Lou, after church, is taking my sister Donna down to the Mayo Clinic because Donna is having this heart procedure done in Mayo this week. So. You have a lot going on. It's a busy week. It's a busy week. I'll do my best. I may not capture all of that. You but, don't have to. Yeah. But we can be in prayer. God, God heard you. So he's got all the details. He always does. Lord, it, it was hard to hear that Alan wasn't feeling well. And it, it, it is, I was grateful he was where he needed to be and that he was, he was ready to bring, bring himself there and be there, you know. But Lord, it's hard to know that now because his immune system has been so depleted, he gets something else. And so God, we just pray that you would be with Alwyn, comfort him, strengthen him, bring him through this, Lord God. Uh, even as he feels weak and, and uh, nauseous and maybe frustrated, uh, Lord, we pray your peace that he may receive your deep peace, even in his body, a deep sense that you are there with him and that you're going to bring him through this. Uh, we pray that nothing else is introduced into his compromised immune system. Uh, we just pray protection and bring him back to us soon, Lord God. And then, Lord, we lift up Donna's husband uh, with the, the kidney issue, Lord, we pray that you'd be with the doctors and nurses as they analyze that. May they assess that correctly and bring, bring a, a way of coming through that for, for him. And then there was another really important thing, and we pray that you will be in that situation as well. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. I almost pulled it off. Yes. I have joy. I was able to have lunch with an old friend of mine who got herself into a controlling relationship and finally got out and can now be back with her family wow. and her friends. That's huge. Yes, it was wonderful. Let's celebrate God's work in that situation. God, we're grateful that that you have a way of working those things out. And, and we may have to be in difficult situations for a while or hard relationships, but Lord, you have a way, because you desire for us to be at peace. And you desire for us to uh, be able to experience our family and our friends and receive love. And so I'm so grateful that you are always present to those difficult relationships and you're working out your deliverance, your blessings. So we, we continue to pray for that, that the work that you're doing would not uh, encounter obstacles, but that she would be brought to a fuller place of freedom and healing and the, the fullness of joy. Lord, in your mercy. Um, we'll do the joy first. I got to spend some time with a chosen sister down in the cities and for a few days, and also 
and I don't get to see her except every six months, and got to enjoy the 88 degree temperatures that were down there. But um, when we get together, all we do is sit and eat and crochet and eat more, but it's just talking nonstop. And her name is Kathy, and the concern is Chloe's groomer had neck surgery, and she said the, the surgery was good, but she has a little case of claustrophobia. She has to wear this brace on her neck for six weeks. And she said that it, it's really getting to her. And so she, she needs some prayers to just kind of chill a little bit and get through this for another four weeks. Okay. Oh, I'm sorry, and her name is Amanda. Lord, we're grateful. We'll, we'll tackle Amanda's situation first. Uh, I can't imagine what that must feel like. And we empathize with that sense of just how the, the foreignness of it, it, it's, it just uh, hinders movement. <laughs> That's its purpose. But in a way that feels awkward and weird and then just gets her kind of worked up. God, we pray that you would give her peace and that you would help her neck heal and that you would help her find ways to distract herself so that she can get through this time. But even in the midst of it, Lord God, we pray that you would work by your spirit in opening her up to you and deepening her appreciation of who you are and how you are right there with her, that she might even uh, experience this connection with you that she couldn't have experienced any other way because you slowed her life down. So we pray all of those things to be at work in Amanda's life. And then, Lord, we're grateful for Kathy and, and just the ease of wonderful friendships and the gift that that is to our soul. We need not only to have friends, but to experience them. We need time spent together. And that is a precious gift that you give us. It's a, an amazing commodity in our lives that we need to just steward well. And in that, it, it gives us great benefits and joy. We celebrate that with Donna. Lord, in your mercy... Lord, uh, we lift up Anetta and this change that has occurred in her health while Doreen has been gone. And it's just, it's the natural next step. It's a new chapter. It happens, but it's just, it's a hard one. This is a hard one. So we pray that you would be with the whole family, be with Anetta, help her in the, in the process of, of coming to grips with this, of accept this new stage of her life and help her uh, in the transitions and all the details and the change in her schedule and the different place. God, we, we pray that you would come around that in amazing ways. Give them eyes to see moments of grace. Help this be sustained by your peace and be with them in this transition. Lord, in your mercy. I don't remember if we prayed for this particular woman, but I want to lift up Jamie that I met at a restaurant. When she found out I was a pastor, she asked me a bunch of things that I could be in prayer for, <laughs> for her. So I was like, I can pray, I can do that. Like, not right now, but I can bring it to church. We have a church that loves to pray for others, so allow me to lift that up. Dear Lord, we lift up Jamie to you and her concern about her car and her roof. God, we pray that you would continue to be bringing her provisions and solutions and help her in those two very difficult things in her life, uh, transportation that's reliable and a house that doesn't leak she knows you are with her she trusts that you will bring an answer but lord we pray that you as you're in the process of this that you would quickly bring the answers to her life in a way that she can give you the glory uh, lord in your mercy hear our prayer all right we're going to oh no no there's sweet joy um Last night we got 
to go to the Grand March for our granddaughter Macy's um, prom, and it was it was a joy to see you know these young kids and how good they clean up and and her days and you know how cute they were. But it was kind of bittersweet that her mom was not able yeah. to witness it. Yeah. Yeah. So that's where we just want our moms. And, and so, yeah. those life things that are important. Lord, we lift up those very real grief and lost places in our hearts that we come to again and again, where we want our mom to be there. We want our mom to celebrate uh, these changes, these stepping stones in life, these fun times. And so we pray, Lord God, for the whole family system. In whatever, to whatever degree that was raised in their spirits and their hearts, that awareness that the mom's not here, the daughter's not here, the wife is not here. Lord God, we pray again for you to bring your comfort and peace. We're grateful that you never tire to give us comfort and peace because we never stop grieving, because we never stop loving the person that we have lost. So we ask your a very precious comfort and, and ministering spirit to their hearts in this situation. Lord, in your mercy, hear our, hear our prayer. All right. Well, we're going to do something now as we transition off our prayer time. We're going to do something a little bit different. It's called a um, affirmation of faith. And so if you would rise, we're going to read through this affirmation together. We believe in God, the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, by whose mercy we are given a new birth into a living hope through Christ's resurrection from the dead. We believe that through Christ we are born into an inheritance that is imperishable, undefiled, and unfading, and into a present salvation that will be revealed in its fullness in the last time. We believe that until that time, the Spirit works in us to grow the genuineness of our faith, that we may give praise, glory, and honor when Jesus, whom we love but have not seen, is revealed. Amen.
be seated. Let us pray. Holy and loving God, you treat us like a forgiving parent who runs to embrace us when we have rebelled and gone our own way. Your mercy gives us the opportunity to try again, to return to your grace, to pick ourselves up and brush ourselves off. You forget how many strikes we've had against us, but invite us back into the inheritance you desire for us. May our offering this day reflect our gratitude of your mercy and grace won for us in Christ. Amen. And now our prayer of illumination. Almighty God, through your only Son, you overcame death and opened to us the light of eternity. Enlighten our minds and kindle our hearts with the presence of your Spirit, that we may hear your words of comfort and challenge in the reading of the Scriptures. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. And now our Scripture reading from three different Gospels. The first one is Luke. Peter replied, Man, I don't know what you're talking about. Just as he was speaking, the rooster crowed. The Lord turned and looked straight at Peter. Then Peter remembered the word the Lord had spoken to him. Before the rooster crows today, you will disown me three times. And he went outside and wept bitterly. And from John, when they finished eating, Jesus said to Simon Peter, Simon, son, son of John, do you love me more than these? Yes, Lord, he said. You know that I love you. Jesus said, feed my lambs. And again, Jesus said, Simon, son of John, do you love me? He answered, yes, Lord, you know that I love you. Jesus said, take care of my sheep. The third time he said to him, Simon, son of John, do you love me? Peter was hurt because Jesus asked him the third time, do you love me? He said, Lord, you know all things. You know that I love you. Jesus said, feed my sheep. And from 1 Peter Praise be to the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. In his great mercy, he has given us new birth into a living hope through the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thank you, God. I remember listening to Gerda Weissman Klein on a Holocaust special on TV one evening. 
I was mesmerized. I didn't, bar- I didn't barely breathe, and I hardly moved. Gerda shared some of her story as a Holocaust survivor, surviving six years in the concentration camps. And she shared about one short interaction between herself and her friend. And this is a quote from Gerda. Ilsa, a childhood friend of mine, once found a raspberry in the concentration camp and carried it in her pocket all day to present it to me that night on a leaf. Imagine a world which our entire possession is one raspberry and you gift it to your friend. We'd all be pretty much hard-pressed to imagine life inside the concentration camps. But then added to that, receiving that one raspberry, how very difficult it would be to wrap our heads and our hearts around receiving that precious gift. Ilsa carried it carefully all day long and was thoughtful about the presentation, you know, putting it on a leaf, showcasing that raspberry, and then giving it the whole thing to Gerda. Such generosity, thoughtfulness, kindness, such a selfless act of love. And I think being on the receiving end of such a gesture, of receiving that raspberry, that that would be hard to process. And I think it would, it would change you. Change you in some deep ways and stick with you for the rest of your life. Gerda survived the concentration camp, but Ilsa did not. Ilsa was mur- murdered shortly thereafter as she was led to the gas chambers. Gerda, one day shy of turning 21, weighing only 68 pounds, completely white-haired and dressed in rags, was liberated. Gerda dedicated the rest of her life in Holocaust education and being a human rights activist. And she never forgot Ilsa and her gift of that one raspberry. She carried that story in her heart, in her education, in her writing, shared it with the world, fueling her, inspiring her, until her death just recently, just this last April, 2022, at the age of 98. You know, receiving that raspberry must have been a profound experience, hard to process beyond, really, our ability to comprehend, beyond our ability to absorb fully, to take it in completely. And yet we have just come off Easter Sunday. One week ago, we celebrated Jesus' resurrection from the dead. He walked out of that tomb and is alive forevermore. Hallelujah. And we joyfully can say in triumph, And in celebration, where, O death, is your victory? Where, O death, is your sting? Each Easter, we are reminded that for for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth, believeth in him shall not perish, but have everlasting life. We just came off Easter in which God gave us his most precious possession in the whole world. God offered Jesus, presented on a cross in public for all to see his red blood flowing down. We didn't deserve that kind of kindness or generosity or such a selfless act of love any more than Gerda deserved Ilsa's act of love. And yet many of us here have received that gift 
from God. Somehow again, we have received Jesus' death and resurrection for our own lives, taking that in. And our lives are impacted. Our lives are changed. The Sunday after Easter is a little bit of a challenging Sunday. Coming down from such a high, high. A lot of people just take this Sunday off. They're like, it's just too much. I did my thing. I punched the, the clock, my church time clock. And I just, I'm, I'm, you know, they take this day off. Pastors often take this Sunday off from preaching. It's challenging also. And that I think if we were honest, or if we just paused a little bit, that, that on some level, we're now struggling to embrace the totality of God's act of love in Jesus. We're struggling to receive it all of what Jesus did for us, his sacrifice. Leaves us, leaves us kind of reeling, feeling disoriented, maybe, a, maybe even numb or just overwhelmed, wondering to ourselves, what just happened? And we might be tempted to just, let's get back to normal. Let's pass over that little bit of feeling uncomfortable of trying to understand what Jesus has done on the cross. Get, it, get Work past that discomfort as quickly as possible. Which makes me truly appreciate the wisdom of this new season that we're entering into. It is a time called Eastertide, the Easter season. Did you know about this? I thought Lent was the Easter season. <laughs> it's not. <laughs> uh, Eastertide or the Easter season continues from the Sunday after Easter all the way to Pentecost. Four or five weeks, maybe a few more. And so today is actually called the second Sunday of Easter. I never understood that. This new season mirrors the time the disciples had with the risen Lord. After he rose, he spent four or five weeks with his disciples before he ascended. And in that time, Jesus helped his disciples process his resurrection that was so big and life-changing to help them keep growing in their understanding and keep following Jesus. I think we need time to process what happened too. Like how, how do we name what we have received in Christ and his resurrection? How do we go about even beginning to describe that in our own lives? How do we lean into and experience all of what this amazing gift is that we have received? How is my life different because Jesus is in it? How is my life different that God, even God was, has been at, my, at work in my life just this past year? And what is this living hope that Peter talks about? Jesus risen from the dead, this new life, receiving a hope that is living and now can never die. Those are some profound truths. And it's going to take a while for those to sink in. It's going to take some time to get used to them, a, a few moments to move Jesus' resurrection as kind of a factoid in our head, a Sunday school answer to move it down into our hearts and into our daily living because we know Christianity isn't what you know about Jesus it's what you do with what you know about Jesus it's not a religion it's a relationship it is an Easter tide we begin to connect the dots between Easter and the rest of life we let that knowledge wash over us, and, but then we have to pivot from praising God to now following the Lord, moving from worship to discipleship. It is fitting then as we move from praise and worship and thanksgiving and singing and awe 
and move towards discipleship, it's, it's fitting that, our, that, that we do that so that we can live out these truths in our daily lives. It's also fitting it, that in doing that, that we hear from one of Jesus' biggest main disciples. Jesus called Simon Peter and his brother Andrew as his first disciples, the first followers of him from the book of Matthew. We also learn that Peter was headstrong, a natural born leader. Jesus uh, said in a kind of a play on words that on this rock, play on words of Peter's name, on this rock I will build my church and the gates of hell will not prevail against it. So Jesus was establishing and saying, this is a key leader, the main leader on which I'm going to be bringing my church, building my kingdom. He was the first disciple who identified Jesus correctly as the Messiah. Peter was outspoken and brash and impetuous and bold. He had been with Jesus from the very beginning. And he also promised loyalty. He promised loyalty to Jesus even up to dying for him. Peter had a lot of enthusiasm. But even as Peter said that, Jesus replied to him, Peter, you will deny me three times before the rooster crows this next morning. And then we're reminded of that from the text. And Peter denies knowing Jesus three times during that night of Jesus' arrest. When Peter left that courtyard, that place of abandoning and denying and betrayal of Jesus early that morning, and he went outside and he wept bitterly. And in that, Jesus knew, and Peter knew, and Peter knew that Jesus knew that Peter had utterly failed his friend, his master, the Messiah. No escape from that failure. A low point for Peter. Maybe the lowest of a point for all the disciples except for Judas. But then Peter receives his own red raspberry on a green leaf. After his denial of Jesus and after Jesus' resurrection, Jesus sought out Peter. Jesus tracked him down and extended that gift by reinstating Peter as the chief disciple. For the three denials, Jesus asks the three questions, do you love me? Because Jesus was not done with Peter. Peter probably didn't feel like he deserved that kind of kindness and forgiveness and that much grace and all that un unconditional love. Jesus' sacrificial act of love. It's probably a bit hard for him to take that all in. And yet we know that Peter did just that. Peter, Peter took time to take that in and process it and learn from it and that's why Peter is the perfect person to write and teach us the things that he is teaching us about this new life in Christ, this living hope that we have in Jesus. Just to refresh our memories, Peter in 1 Peter wrote, Praise be to the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, starting out with this amazing praise. In his great mercy, he has given us a new birth into a living hope through the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead. God has given us a new birth. This new birth is simply a new way of engaging with God, empowered by the Spirit. We are starting out fresh, a new way of living with God. This new way is something Peter called the living hope, made possible through Christ, received and resurrected from the dead. He knew that his discipleship now no longer rested on his ability to make it happen. He realized his, his discipleship, his relationship with God no longer rested on his performance, either his successes or his failures, his boasts, his empty promises of loyalty. Instead, 
his relationship with God, being a child of God, forgiven and loved, all rested securely on Jesus' sacrifice. It's all based on grace now. This is a new way. Things have been upended. It is a new life. It's a new way of being that could now never be taken from us or destroyed or killed. It is a living hope. It can never die. And in that, Peter has now experienced joy, the fullness of joy, in learning about that new hope and writing about it. Peter becomes our example, a forerunner of what it means to walk with Christ after the resurrection. How life could be different, not only for ourselves, but for others. During our Monday Thursday service, we took a moment to dream of how life could be better for those around us in Dent and Burgess. We thought about how we could share God's love with others and be a blessing. It was just another way of asking how could we be like Ilsa and give our raspberry on a green leaf to somebody else? How could we give the experience of our new life, give away our precious living hope to others? Of course, further conversations will be needed around these comments to turn uh, these thoughts, these dreams into reality. But here are some of the responses. Share our faith through service of helping the elderly with meals and help in the home. Work and per participate in church and service organizations. Help people who are not as fortunate as us to find peace and happiness with God. Finding a system to help the elderly from being depressed and lonesome. Support church activities and expand mission projects. Be an example by our actions of God's love, encouraging and accepting of all. To be kind, helpful, and a faithful example. Take more interest in our town. <laughs> that was good. Open doors and accept others. Spread the word of a loving God. These are good responses. They're insightful and right on point. Answers that I think we could, we could really sink our teeth into as we I explore them more deeply. Well, that's how we were processing God's activity in our life on Monday, Thursdays. But how about you? How is your post-Easter life rounding out for you? What words or phrases would you use to describe having the risen Lord in your life and how it's a game changer? How does it bring you joy, the fullness of joy that Peter was experi has ex had experienced? How is your life different? Have you tasted this new life, this living hope in Christ? even if it's just the size of a raspberry. Let us uh, respond in rejoicing and standing as we sing our next hymn together. To God's glory.
dear friends, before we transition to the benediction, you may take your seats. And we're going to have a wonderful announcement brought to, by Darlene Holtz, the chair of the SPRC. Good morning, and I'm very excited to be here to make this wonderful announcement. It is the intention of Bishop Lynette Flambeck to appoint the Reverend Pastor in the Reverend Joyce Slosted as pastor of Dent Burgess United Methodist Church and acting on behalf of the congregation, the Staff Parish Relations Committee has affirmed the bishop's intention. Each church member's supportive prayers and acts of kindness during the transition period will be greatly appreciated by all involved persons. Her starting date will be July 2nd, 2023. Any questions or anyone have anything to add? Unfortunately, I was not at the meeting because I got blessed with norovirus. Uh, Jane was there. Jane, do you have anything to add about Joyce? Well, I think and Carla was there as well. I think we felt that she will be a good fit she has a nice personality. She's, uh, her values match ours. She's from a small church, so she's used to being in small congregations in a small church, and I think she's looking forward to being with us. And so we, we all felt really good about her. That's good to hear. Malak. Malak. Thank you. Great privilege of visiting with Joyce on Friday. She stopped by to visit the parsonage. And she has two cats. <laughs> so right there, she moved from someone I didn't really know to family. She just became family right away. She is a gracious, kind woman, full of wisdom. And I think she is going to be a good fit. She, she's, just, she's just gracious and kind. And she has experience that I don't have. So you're going to benefit from her years of ministry experience. You might be going, oh my gosh, we didn't know what we were missing. So uh, uh, I think this is a really good thing for us to process. Of course, we've got some emotions to navigate, but uh, if uh, you can be in prayer now specifically for Joyce as she begins to make plans now to, to join you in July. All right, well, let us continue with our benediction. I have a new benediction for a new season. So you may remain seated so that you may fully receive all of God's blessing. But let us, let us receive. May you go forth carrying the joy that is yours as a child of God and an heir to the resurrection of our Lord Jesus Christ. May that joy fill you up and fuel your journey as we ask in the wake of the resurrection, how now? shall we live. Amen and amen. Mm -hmm.